Wait a minute. It must be time for some follow-up call. It's time for some follow-up calls, y'all. It's time for some follow-up calls, y'all. Follow-up. Follow-up. Pick up the phone. Let's go. Hello? Hello? What up? What up? What up? Happy Tuesday. Good day to you. What up, Johnny? What up, D? What up? Everybody, good to see you jumping in this morning. I'm about to get some uh, calls going. I'm going to have to handle some objections today because I got an offer that I sent the seller and they said they want to have uh, another call with me. They have some questions. So questions mean one thing, objections. So we're going to get some objections to overcome. You know it. So I want to get into real estate, but don't know where to start. Well, what I would say is to join the Future Cash Flow Club. It's a community of investors where we talk about wholesaling, we talk about creative deal structuring, buying houses subject to, all of the creative stuff that everybody's talking about. You don't need a real estate license or any of that. Wow, where do I sign up? Well, I would say go to futurecashflowclub.com. That's futurecashflowclub.com. You can even get a free trial. Try it out today. What up? One of my favorite attorneys. I see you, my man. Where you been high? I ain't seen you in a month of Sundays. You still holding down Chicago? I was just in Chicago about, I don't know, three months ago, something like that. Yep, yep. What up? What up? Good to see you all. So give this video a thumbs up. Give it a like. Give it a share if you care. And I'm about to do some follow-up calls and see if we can uh, put some black ink on white paper and have somebody uh, sell me their house. Real estate calls, baby. You know how it is. You got to talk to the people if you want to make the playing field a little more equal. So for those that don't know, my name is Chris Monroe. It's the student master teacher, Mr. I Stay Woke. I'm out of St. Louis, Missouri. I do some um, buying creatively. I do some buying cash here in St. Louis. I do wholesale deals nationwide. So, you know, I could do deals really anywhere. I really could buy anywhere, too, if I really wanted to. But you know how it is. So, yeah, holding it down here. Hit me up next time you're here for show. Yeah, I don't know when I'll be back in Chicago. Um, let me see. I think I went, I almost think I went two times last year for some reason. You know, it's only like four and a half, five hours away from St. Louis. So, I hop, skip, and a jump right up the road. You know how it is. What up, Big Chris? REI Profit in the building. All he do is make profits. So, we got some follow-up calls to make today. And uh, we're going to see if we can make that pay. Let's see who we got in here. Um, I got a person that texts back. I think this house was in Florissant. No, this house was in Hazelwood. A house in Hazelwood. I emailed him an offer. And you know, I always do that multiple offer strategy. What up, Junior? <laughs> I'm Chris Junior. Uh, you ain't even, you older than me? Or are you younger than me? Who knows? Let's see here. We got a question though, before we get into the lesson though. If there is a tired landlord getting rid of properties, but will not give me a number for one property and he has not accepted or refused my offer, what conversation should I have or what should, and they cut out. So what I would say a lot of times um, when it comes to a number, what problem are we solving for them? You know, the number can be a problem, but the bigger problem is usually something else that we haven't uncovered. It's something similar with this guy I'm about to call right now. He says he don't really have to sell, but why is he talking to me? I don't really have to sell. I can just keep renting it out. Well, why are you even talking to me? So, you know how that go. But Florissant is hot. You know it. Um, and also, we're supposed to be doing our um, appraisal for that house we're selling in Florissant today, too. But yeah, they, uh, you know, when they don't want to really give you a number, you know, really, I, I try to attack the problem more than attack the number. What is the problem you have and what is my solution? And I try to present that more than try to beat them up on price right out the gate. Because we can always beat them up on price eventually if we need to. We can always renegotiate after we're under contract. We can always change and flip the script, what they call retrade, uh, after you're already locked in with somebody. If we have to, I just don't like doing it if we don't have to. So yeah, if that seller has a lot of properties, he's a tired landlord, you already said that, and you know he's tired, sometimes you gotta put that knife in and turn it. I mean, so you still just wanna be a landlord and keep dealing with these tenants? 
all the pain that you have uncovered with, with the conversation with him, that's why I like to ask a lot of questions. When you see me talking to these sellers, I try to uncover all of their pain so that when I got to close them later, I can throw all that junk they threw at me right back at them with the solution to that problem, you know? And sometimes you just got to let them know this is, you know, this is what we can offer or a range of what we can offer. We can offer somewhere between here and here and see if we can get it going. So give me one second. Hello, thanks for calling. I'm on a live stream. But <laughs> that was quick. Gotta be quick if you wanna be Chris. So what up, Jenny? Jenny, I see you. I see you. Happy holiday Tuesday to you. It ain't a holiday. It's every day is a holiday to me. So so enough of the mumbo jumbo. So yeah, the deal I'm actually about to call this Mr. Jason. I don't know if you saw the call I made with him. Was it yesterday? It might have been yesterday. It might have been the day before. I don't know. I talked to him the other day, and he basically told me he did not like my cash offer. I told him 142 So I sent him a multiple offer email. So in the email, it breaks down basically a cash offer, how it would work. 141000 is what I told him. I, I offered him 141550 So 141000 $141,550. Where did we get that number from? Made it up. Nice low ball offer. I think the ARV is about 200 on this house. So that might not even really be low enough, to be honest. But it is a rented property. It's already stabilized. It's got a long-term tenant in there that's been there for eight years. He's paying eleven sixty a month. So that number may not even really be good either, to be honest. So I just threw a number out there. I knew he already told me he wouldn't take that. So I just threw it out there anyway. Um, but my creative offer was exactly what he was asking for, 165. He said he wanted 165,000 for the property, so I offered him 165,000 for the property as a purchase price. He has a loan of about 105, so he's basically trying to pull out his $60,000 in equity so that he can actually sell the house and move on and do bigger and better things. But he has some objections that we're about to overcome right now. So give me one second. One momento. All right, let's see what we got now. All right, so Mr. Jason, let's call him up. Uh, one hundred and five thousand loan, approximately one sixty five purchase price, and so we have to figure out what we're going to do with that extra money. I'm gonna give him some of it now, some of it later. Alliance World, rar. You missed the training last night. If you were trying to get in on the Future Cash Flow Club, we do weekly trainings on this stuff and get deep in the weeds and show you exactly how to execute it. Uh, so let's see here. Uh, all right, Mr. Jason, let's call him up. We're going to call him from that number. We're going to record the call. And I think I don't need anything else from him, right? Let's see what we got. Call him from that phone. And that's the right number, right? Uh, yep. Let's go. Rawr. That's for Jason. Hey, Jason, this is Chris with St. Louis Cash Bars. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? All is well. I got your message that you were uh, interested in still selling there and you had a couple of questions. So I was just calling back to see what I can do to help you out. Yeah, um, yeah. I just had a couple questions just to figure out which way is best, whatnot. And then uh, again, I'm just I want to try and make sure, you know, because I've had a good tenant, you know, I want to make sure that he's taken care of. You know, that's the only like that's mainly that's my only concern right now is making sure that, you know, he's in a good place. Uh, that makes sense. I can definitely understand that. We wouldn't want to displace somebody that's already been living there for, uh, what'd you say, about eight years? Yeah. Yep. We like them when they stay long term like that. We actually bought a building in South St. Louis from a lady. She had a tenant for 25 years. Can you believe that? <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> that that renter. Like yeah. Know? Yeah. And this was a duplex. So. 
that one tenant paid for her building like five times in just rent over that 25 years. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, it, and I know, you know, I know I'm, I guess, you know, I, I've talked to a couple of people, obviously people that I trust, you know, just to bounce things off. Um, his rent is 1156. Um, I guess are you guys? I mean, are you guys looking to increase his rent? Probably not right now. Yeah. I mean, eventually we have to go up with taxes and you know things like that because everything goes up. Right. You know that every year, every two years in St. Louis County, pretty much. Oh yeah. Um. So it was extended actually to twenty twenty seven. Um. He's paying eleven fifty six. Uh, now, is that a lease with an option to purchase it, or is it just a standard residential lease? No, it's a lease with an option to purchase. And when does that uh, option addendum expire? Uh, 2022, or 2027. So that's out to 2027 as well. And what is the purchase... Uh oh, I think the call dropped. You still there? Hmm, and it hung up on me. Let me call him back. How are you gonna control with a tenant? Yet? Hello? Hey, yeah, Jason, I think we got disconnected. Yeah, I think I accidentally. accidentally <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> it happens. So you were yeah. saying that the uh, lease ends in 2027. And the addendum for the lease with the option to purchase ends in 2027 as well. Is that correct? Yeah. And I, and I know that, you know, I know he doesn't want to, I know he doesn't want to buy. Um, so, you know, I, I, like I said, I, I do need to discuss with him. Like I know he would, you know, I know I could, uh, um, I know he'd sign an addendum, you know, changing that and removing that option to buy. Right. I guess, you know, a couple of my concerns are, you know, if, if I did this, if I did the 165, you know, per your email, you're saying that you typically have it paid off in seven to 10 years. Um, but I think I have about 20 years left on my on the mortgage there. Are, are you paying, I assume you're paying the mortgage company directly or you're paying through, you're not paying through me, correct? No, we handle everything on this end. Once we buy the property, you don't have to do anything in regards to this house whatsoever. We own it, it's our baby. We have to deal with the repairs, the tenant, everything dealing with this property. So you don't have to do anything with it anymore. But my mortgage stays in place, right? That's correct. Okay. Um, and then, like, and I saw an option like recourse, and I'm just, you know, because I know a lot of these companies did this in 2006, you know, and then when the market crashed in 2009, you know, a lot of companies went belly up. You know, you want you, um, you, you want to you want to know a secret, I'm Jason? Sorry. Yeah, they've been doing this creative stuff longer than you and I've been alive. We just didn't know about it yet. This has been going on for a very <laughs> a very long time, way before two thousand six, way before that market crash. Uh, the one of the people that I studied from when I first started been doing it since nineteen eighty one. So that's over forty years, <laughs> just with that person, and he learned it from Carlton Sheets, I believe. So you know, I don't know if you remember that guy from the '90s doing the infomercials at night. So yeah. this creative stuff been around a very long time, way before that crash of two thousand seven and eight. Yeah, I guess I just, you know, the couple of concerns that I have are what happens if something does happen. You know, the market corrects, and you guys are upside down, and you want to cut your losses. You know, I assume that's what the deed in lieu is for. And, and again, I'm just talking worst case scenario. I'm not saying that you're going to. Correct. You know, um, 
that Dean in lieu, I just take that, I could just take that to the county that exercises and puts it back in my name. That's correct. Okay. Um, the only other, you know, the only other concern, like I said, this, this has been a good tenant of mine. If, you know, his pay, his rent basically makes the mortgage payment. So, uh, so what is the uh, actual mortgage payment? Yeah, that's what I, that's the other thing. The mortgage payment, well, it's just changed. It's probably going to change, you know, with taxes. Um, he was making the mortgage payment and the water. So, or the sewer, sorry, because sewer can put a lien on your property. Are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, I just heard some beeping. Yeah, that was somebody else calling. My phone blows up in the morning. <laughs> I can't even oh, have a phone call I'm without here. six interruptions. You know how that goes. <laughs> right. Right, so yeah, you know, I have concerns on if you guys are going to be you know, cash flow positive if we do the second option, you know. What is, what is the loan payment? I'm trying to log in just to look. Oh, okay, to make sure you got it, yeah. Of course. You know, by stupid internet. No, I don't want to call. Right here. Okay. You want a breakdown, I guess? Uh, yeah. If you if you just got an idea of what it is, um, so I guess yeah, uh, the monthly payment including escrows is eleven forty one seventeen. So that's with taxes and insurance. Yeah. Okay, and there's no HOAs over there, I, I don't assume, correct? Not in Hazel. No, no, there's not, nope. Okay. Well, I got them here, yay. <laughs> yeah, I came across one the other day with HOAs of 550 a month. Is that crazy or what? <laughs> uh, Yeah, that was probably Newtown or Charleston. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I well, said that's... If it's a regular house, yeah, that's crazy. That's like rent. Uh, I'm in the wrong business. We need to start an HOA business. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Until you start managing it, then you're like, no, hell no, I don't want to do no more. You know that. Three, three, eight. And so if your payment is eleven forty one seventeen, including taxes and insurance. His yeah, his the tenant interest is, is seven ninety four fifty seven. Mm. Okay. So yeah. Seven. So. That's the thing about the contingent. If if it's not cash flow positive, I don't I don't want to say, hey, let's just all you know, let's go do it this way, and then it not work out for you, and you be you know, you'd be like, wait a second. Is there a reason you don't go up on his rent at all? Um. Well, when I'm so, it was like two. When did I move in here? I've been in here since I guess 2016, and. We were just struggling to, you know, we were struggling to find somebody to buy it, to buy it for what we wanted. We didn't, you know, I was with an, I was with my ex-wife. It was just a pain in the ass dealing with her. <laughs> I know that's right. Um, you know, trying to have time to fix it. I had a bunch of other rentals at the time too. You know, so I would stretch. You know, I'm working <laughs> 50, 60 hours, just regular job, and then you know, doing my other rentals, you know, and I'm too proud to get a management company. So I did all my, all my own. And, uh, I had some, he, he needed a place to stay. He didn't, you know, he didn't have the best credit. He was self-employed, you know, he put, you know, five grand down and he fixed everything to get in occupancy and he was ready, you know, he was going to buy it. And then as time moved on, he's like, eh, I'm self-employed. It's kind of, you know, Hey, it'd be difficult for me to get a loan. And I'm like, yeah, dude, I'm a mortgage. <laughs> I'm a mortgage underwriter. I understand it. And he's like, I just want to rent here for a while. And he's like, I said, he's up on upgrades, uh, you know, cause he's a good tenant. So, mm -hmm. um, so I'm like, yeah, dude, when we redid this, I'm like, Hey, I need to bump you. He was paying a thousand a month. Then I said, I need to bump you to cover my, just to cover my expenses, you know, so that, 
1156, you know, is basically covers the mortgage payment and the uh, sewer. Right. So that's why I did it that way. You know, I'm I'm probably too nice of a guy. That's why I kind of got out of the mortgage rental industry. <laughs> <laughs> so you're nicer than everybody I know. So you let them basically, you know, have it, which is okay if it solves your problem, but you can't stay like that forever, you know? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So I don't know if that contingency way is going to, is going to be contingency, you know, option two is going to be an option for you guys anymore, knowing what the cash flow is. And you is it uh and you said you just bumped them up so did he uh, have a problem with it going up or anything or what how did he respond to oh, that? Oh no, he was cool. He's like I I didn't want you to raise me five hundred bucks a month. I'm like no, dude, cover my expenses. Like oh, one hundred and fifty goes one hundred and fifty six bucks a month. He's like no, I get it, dude. <clears throat> yeah. And I know he's he's expecting another increase. He knows he's getting a great deal. Yeah, because that's way too low, to be honest. This is a three-bedroom, right? What is this, three-two? Yeah, three-bedroom. Oh, yeah. He oh, should be like... Three bath. They're getting like seventeen, eighteen hundred for those and some, and this, you know, sometime. I know. And, that, and that's my only, you know, that is my only concern because he's been a great tenant. If I sell it, is somebody going to come in and be like, no, bam, we got to raise you to seventeen hundred right away. No, we probably wouldn't do that, but we, we probably would have to bump them up because it wouldn't make sense for us to buy it if it doesn't cash flow at all. You know what I mean? Sometimes we're able right. to do certain things to make it, you know, a little better, but, you know, that's right at the same number of what your loan payment is. Yeah, yeah, that's, and that's my concern, you know, and then, you know, doing the contingency method, you know, it's, like, yeah, it's really not going to make sense for you guys to get it paid off in seven to ten years, you know. Yeah, um, unless we just sell it later <laughs> again, <laughs> sell it in two, three years. Right, right. That's right. really the only way to really get it out unless we go up a little bit on that rent. Yeah, so that's, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to get into this process and, you know, you'd be like, okay, all of a sudden, wait a second, we can't do it. You know, this we got to flip back to the cash method, which I, you know, I don't. I've come to the realization or the terms that I can do the cash. Yeah, you know, I, I, I can make that work. You know, um, so you know, I do want to move forward. It's just you know, what's going to make sense for both of us. Obviously, I'd like more cash in my pocket. But if that doesn't make sense for you and you guys are going to be like, you know, we can't go, that doesn't make sense to go down that path, then I could just stick with the cash offer. So. Yeah, the only way it would make sense for uh, that is if we, well, to be honest, either way we're going to probably go, whoever gets it is going to go up on it. There's no way to really restrict that. Eventually they're going to have to go up because everything costs right. more now. It's just the cost of living. And it's an election yeah. year, so. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I know. <laughs> well, and I think, you know, and I think he's expecting an increase, um, you know, and, and in our, you know, and in the lease, you know, like he's responsible for the majority of the maintenance. So that's how I can, you know, pro I, that's how I can sell like, dude, here, look, you're not going to be responsible for anything anymore, you know? Well, it depends. Um, right. So, in, so in your lease, you say that they are responsible for everything except for like major stuff, like roof, furnace, things like that, right? No, he's responsible for the roof. He's he's responsible for everything but AC and uh, furnace. Oh, okay. Yep. So, so I take that burden off of him. Hey, dude, release this. I take you know release your option to buy from this. You know, you're lose. You know, you don't have the responsibility of maintenance. But hey, dude, look, they're, they're probably going to raise your rate sometime. You know, your your lease. You know, your lease amount sometime soon. So. So how is that? Uh, how is that written in your lease? How? What is the? Uh, what are the rules that you have in there as far as increasing the rent? Uh, I don't think there's anything in here. I think it's silent. Yeah, 
Yeah, because, you know, just being honest, Jason, selling it cash or selling it the creative way, his rent's going to go up either way. I mean, there's really no way to prevent that. I mean, just being perfectly honest with you. No, I hear you. And I'm just trying to think of what kind of time, you know, is there, can I give him any kind of time frame? Is he going to be, you know, this big asshole about things? You know? I'm trying to figure out, you know, and I don't know, you know, and I don't know your time frame. And again, I'm not trying to get into your guys' business, but. Yeah, we're flexible. We're flexible. We can make this work in any way that makes sense for you, so. Yeah, I mean, I want to, again, he's been a good tenant. He would be a good tenant. I, I, you know, I would, obviously, I need something from him, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, so I want to be as upfront with him as possible. So. You know, and I don't know if you'd like step him up, like, hey, dude, here's what we're going to do. You know, when you come around the end of the year, you know, your rent's going to go up a hundred bucks, you know, and then the next year it's going to go up another hundred bucks. Like he's, he's very, very, very smart, you know, but he also, you know, wants to protect himself. But he's one of those, if you tell him what's going on, hey, this is what's going to happen, he's typically going to be okay with it. Yeah, and we like to communicate and let people know ahead of time. So it wouldn't be something that's like instantly, oh, we're going up tomorrow and your rent's going up. Like, no, we wouldn't do that. We would give them, you know, at least three to six months notice on anything just because, you know, it's the right thing to do. So a person does have the option to do what's in their best interest. Yeah, and I don't know if that makes sense, you know, if, what the numbers that I was throwing out there made sense or if I'm like you know, well below and he's looking at, you know, Hey dude, you're looking at a $500 increase within three years, you know, cause who knows what, yeah, like you said, it's an election year. Who knows what's going to happen? So. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, those are my concerns. You know, what do I, what do I tell him? What do I, what can I honestly tell him? This is what, let's go outside. This is what we're looking at as far as increases, you know, or possible increases. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. what I would do. Does he know you're uh, planning on selling it soon? Or? I've kind of hinted around to him like, hey, dude, you know, we've been doing this for a while and you've been, <laughs> you've benefited from, you know, this, but I've also benefited from you you know, doing a lot of, you know, doing upgrades and, you know, replacing, you know, there was a, it still had an old cast iron tub in there and that's, you know, he replaced that with a, you know, a nice tub. Oh, wow. So he's really handy, huh? Yeah. Oh yeah. That's what he does. He has a, that's his business is he does, he does some remodeling, some um, outdoor stuff, whatnot. Mm Mm-hmm. Makes perfect sense. So I, w- I would just uh, position it just like that. Say, hey, I'm planning on selling this house here pretty soon, you know, um, and they're probably going to end up going up on the rent. I mean, unless, you know, and just take his temperature, basically see what he wants to do. He probably would want to stay. He might say, you know what, I'll find another place and we might not even have to worry about none of this. <laughs> you never know. Right. So I like to just, you know, let them know what I'm planning on doing and see what they think about it and go from there. That's really all you can do. Okay. Because uh, you we I don't... mean, am I realistically looking at, come on first, are we realistically looking at, you're you're gonna try and get them up, get it up to the closer to the 1700 we... mark within a few years or? Yeah, we would have to get it up. I don't know if it would be the 1700 or not. It may not be that high, but I'm just saying that's what the market rent is now. That doesn't mean he necessarily would get up to that point, but that 1156, uh, no. That's way too low for the area. It's just (laughs) too low. I mean, there's no way to beat that. You know, I would never leave if I was him, but, you know, that's, you know, I don't know what he thinks. I don't like to think for people. I like to just, you know, pose the question, let them tell me, no, I'm not interested, or yeah, I'm interested. You know, people tell me no every day. I buy houses. So they may say, oh, it's too low or whatever. You know what I mean? It's just, we can't control that part. I hear you. I hear you. I'm just, again, the softy comes out and I want to try and take care of him. You yeah, know, so and he'll be in good hands either way, you know, because, you know, even if we had to give him time to say, hey, yeah, uh, we'll leave it the same for, you know, 
six months, you know, something like that, just so he can either decide to stay or decide to move or whatever he wants to do. We're really flexible. Okay. All right. Let me have that conversation and I will let you know. Okay. Any other questions for me for today? Um, not that I know of. You said you had to do an inspection. I mean, which way do you guys like to do things? So once we agree on everything, we, uh, we, we do the paperwork, we open escrow with the title company. Um, we, we do a walkthrough just to make sure everything looks reasonable. I mean, we don't expect any house to be perfect. I, I don't think I've ever seen a perfect house yet. Um, you know, just to make sure there's nothing crazy going on. And as long as that's good to go, we close the deal out in, in a few weeks. It's pretty simple and clean. Okay. So, um, all right. Uh, if like which which option do you guys which option do you guys prefer? Uh, well, with this cash flow part being so tight, I mean, we don't really have a preference to be honest. We just do we just make an offer on multiple ways we can solve a problem, and we try to make that work out. If cash is better, we go cash. If you, if the creative option is better, we go creative. So it's totally up to you. Now, is there a reason you don't just take the cash offer, or what is your thoughts on the hundred and what did I put on there? Hundred and forty-one thousand. What is your yeah, thought? Yeah, it's one forty-one compared to one sixty-five, and I'm just looking at. I mean, I'm looking at cash in my pocket. You know, that's all I'm looking at. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if I was wanting to get more, you know. Like I told you when we were talking, I wanted to get one, you know, 160, 165 out of it. Well, option two gets me there. Yes, sir. You know, um, yeah, it leaves me a little bit exposed. I mean, to be honest, you know, because the mortgage is still in my name, it's in my ex-wife's name. You know, that actually gets my ex-wife some money, you know, too. Um, yeah. We have a weird thing in our divorce decree where if I sell it over 140, she gets 30% of that profit. Oh, wait a minute. Now our offer is 139. Let's fix that. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I know how to make it work, Jason. Not say we'll, we'll just, you know, do something separate and then I'll fix it up right. No. <laughs> uh, nah, she, you know, no, I'm just messing with you. A, like I said, we have a good relationship. She, I mean, hell, she, you know. I mean, she gets the kids thirty percent of the time. Anything, you know, I can give her some extra money, whatever. You know, yeah, that helps out. Yeah, I mean, I I could be that vindictive guy, but dude, at the end, somebody's gonna be judging me, and I don't want to be judged unfavorably. So I know that's right. Just do the right thing every time. That's what I say too. You know, it's hard taking the high road, but you gotta do it. So you gotta do it. And uh, I did want to ask you, you said for the lease option portion that he has, what is his purchase price on the lease option portion? 150. 150. Oh, yeah. So that so if he stays on that, we couldn't even go more than what he's paying on his lease option portion. Right. Yeah, I would have to get that the lease option removed. I, I know that. Yeah. For for legality purposes for everything. So. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it was originally 140 that, you know, when we re-signed, I raised it to 150. You know, obviously, hey, dude. Uh, you know, and that's why I'm like, okay, 140, you know, if I have to, I can deal with 140. Yeah. Would I like more? Yes, but okay. Yep. Yeah. So I've got stuff I've got to do. Um, you guys don't care about that. So you, when you fund that, that's, the title company's not going to have a problem. They're not going to say, well, we can't give you this 60 grand cash. We have to apply it towards the loan. Is that correct? They don't. Um, so for the $60,000 in equity, that would have to be structured in a creative fashion. We will give you some of that now and the rest of it later. Okay. Well, that makes a big difference too. Yeah, because I mean, with that cash flow being thin like that, we wouldn't, you know, it would take us many years to get that money back either way. You see what I'm saying? So we have to make it make yeah, sense yeah. all the way around, which, you know, we can figure that out. That's not a problem, but we just have to make it make sense. Well, yeah, well, that pushes me back 
to the cash direction. So yeah. no, that makes sense. So yeah. Okay. I All think right. that's probably what I'm going to lean towards is the cash direction. Okay. Um, and then uh, I will get in touch with him, and I'll just let you. I, I I'll let you know when I have things buttoned up on my end. Perfect. That'll work, Jason. All right. All right. You have a good rest of the day. Okay. You as well. Thanks for your time. All right. Bye. -bye. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, trying to deal structure a creative offer on a deal that really ain't a creative offer. I don't even know how we're going to pull that stunt off because he ain't getting no 60000 up front. Hell no. you probably get 10 of that and 50000 in equity, but the house doesn't cash flow. So it's a lot of problem to me in that deal. What do you think about that caller? What do you think about this deal? Uh-oh, now what is this? Mm. What do you think about that? You think there's something there? Is there a there there? Welcome everybody to just jumping in. We're doing some real estate follow-up calls. I got several calls while on the phone. Let me call this lady back real quick. That's a no for me. Hi, this is Kaylee. Hey, yeah, uh, this is Chris. You had called about the house on Arvin. How are you today? Good, good. Uh, you want you had someone who wanted to see it? Yeah, I have a buyer that wants to see it. Um, when is it available to sell? Uh, you can see it either Thursday afternoon or anytime Friday. Okay, I will let him know. Um, can I text you a good time? Yeah, you okay. can just text me back. Yeah, that'll be easy. Cause then, uh, okay. Cause it's it's and on can... it's on Airbnb, so there's people in and out of there. So somebody's in there right now. So as soon as they go out, somebody can come in and look at it. Gotcha. Okay. So you said Thursday afternoon or anytime Friday? Yep. And then it goes right back out for three days again. So we're on off, on off, on off for the next two weeks. <laughs> okay. So that thing gotcha. stays booked. Uh, okay. Um, have you been getting a lot of interest in it? Yeah. The problem being just showing it though, because um, like I say, it's on short term rental. So it stays booked, yeah. and, you know, and so it's kind of hard to show. Some people have seen it, but then, you know, some I've had people go there and say, oh, I thought it had a basement. Like, really? It's like silly stuff. Like, why you came all the way here to say you thought it had a basement? <laughs> but whatever, you know how you know how the game goes. It's kind of funny, if they, especially if they don't have agents. Like, they'll yeah. Yeah, silly stuff like that. Like, you didn't even have to come out here to know that. I could have told you there's no basement. It says it right in the thing. Yeah. But whatever. So yeah, either one of those times. I'll let, I'll let them know, and I'll just text you back a good time, and then you just text me the code. Perfect. That'll work. Appreciate it. Cool. Thank Thanks. you. Bye bye. So let's see here. That's a no for me. Chris Sr. say, uh, let's see here. I like Jason as a person, but the price would definitely go up on that tenant, at least $1,300. I say more than that. I want my sweet spot for something like that is I would have, if the payment is $1,141, I think I want him around $1,500. That's my sweet spot. $1,500. But even that cash offer might be suspect, to be honest. Hmm. I don't even know. Let me double check these numbers real quick on this house. I don't even know how I came up with that number. I probably should have went lower. Whenever we're talking all cash, it got to go low. I think the ARV was around 205 or something like that. He's the right type of seller, just the wrong deal. Yeah, it's going to be hard to make that work. Uh, let's see here. I had so many calls coming in while I was on the phone. Let me call this other person back real quick. Did I tell them I'm here? Call him back. I had seven calls while I was on the phone. Yeah, yeah, what up? Good, good. Uh, you can come to the house if you want to. I'm here. I'm doing a live stream right now, though. About two. Yep. All right. Yeah, they're coming over here to put a, uh, what is he doing to this house? He's putting me a new faucet in, a new light, doing a little bit of light renovations to my own house. I'd be fixing up everybody else's house. Can I get my house hooked up? Can I hook up my house? So yeah, that's seller. Yeah, that's all we can do with him. Matter of fact, let me put into the notes. Spoke to him. 
Tenet, Tenet pays eleven fifty six. Rent plus sewer bill. Got to put it in the notes because I wrote it down here, but you know. Um, P I T I is eleven forty one and seventeen cent. Uh, and that's that, really. Um, and the tenants into twenty seventeen. Tenant until that's a long time, man. Why he stretched the dude out so long like that, though? That's the problem. He should have had it where it ends like the end of this year. We can handle that. We could. We can hold it for. You can float this thing for six, seven, eight months, and then up the rent, or either he can go. You know, to be honest, ain't nothing wrong with it. I would like to keep him there, but he can't stay for that cheap price. He's being way too nice. But see, if I'd have found this guy back when he sold it to this tenant buyer and did this creative deal with him back then, I would have the house here. And I'd be making all that money on an $1,141 payment on a three-bedroom, two-bath, uh, beautiful house over here in Hazelwood that I can rent for about $1,700, $1,800 maybe on a high end. Well, you know, I'm a gangster. I get the high end every time I put stuff out. You know how that go. Or we furnish that bad boy in midterm, short-term rental. It. You know how it is. We try to cash flow these properties. We ain't playing around. Any other questions about Jason before we go to the next victim? Uh, let me put in here to follow up with him in about a week, maybe, I guess. I don't know. I'll put in here to follow up. Follow up. Follow up. Pick up the phone. Let's go. Hello? Create a task. Follow up about the offer. He's wanting the cash. Uh, next Monday. And we'll put a reminder and create a task. Boom. Just like that. So that's it for that fellow. Uh-oh. Let's see here. Who else we got? I got a lot of people emailing me. Um... Trying to see if these are sellers or these just people. Okay, keep it moving. Now, the other day, let me switch my phone up. We got a call from. Find more leads than you can even process. That's multiple listing service. That's the MLS for you real estate agents. Absentee owner information. Find the cash buyers and flippers in any market nationwide. Pull a pre-foreclosure list. And don't forget, you got to find those comps. Get nationwide access with multiple filters powered by PropStream at WokeSource.com. Get your seven-day free trial today. WokeSource.com. That's WokeSource.com. I'm a postcard. And I haven't sent out postcards in probably... Four or five months, somebody called back from a postcard or a postcard like that um, or mail in general. I haven't sent mail in about four months. Somebody responded to one of our mail pieces. So I'm going to see if I can get her on the phone. Uh, let's see here. Do you send mail? Anybody out here sending any mail still? Snail mail? It still works, as you can see. If I didn't miss this yet, because uh, I was slow motion. Uh, let's see. It came off that. Let's apply. Uh, where does she go? I don't see her. I don't see her in the call here. Was that? No, that can't be right. We got to change that. I'm trying to find a person now because they left a voicemail the other day. But I didn't reach her, and I don't think my VA reached her because of the way it came in for some reason. I think my VA tried to reach her, but she couldn't reach her. But I'm going to try to reach her, too. We got to reach them. Don't give up on these people. You call back a postcard. I mean, you you must really want to sell, right? You call back a mail mail piece. I don't see it. Damn, where did this lady go? Did I write her notes down? Hold on. Let me look at my book. Hope I wrote it down because I don't even see it. Hope I wrote it down. Dang, did I write it down? Oh, here it is. Boom. A house over here on Burton Avenue with a 479 number. Let me see if I can find her in here. Where's our phone at? That's weird.
Hmm. Oh, there she is. Lena. Luna. Luna. And she called back from a postcard. This is her original voicemail. Lena Wu in response to your card uh, about purchasing my property at eight months. She called me back at four seven. So, yep, that was her original voicemail there. I think we got another interaction with her. Let me check. Looks like a second voicemail. Uh, it's just a phone bump, but I want to call her back. Let's call her back on the number she called us from, which was this number right here. Boom. Record the call. Let's call Ms. Lena. Luna or Lena? I don't know what her name was. Hey, uh, Miss Wu. Yes. This is Chris. You had uh, called back our postcard in regards to selling your house on Burton. How are you today? Oh, fine. Did you get that one sold yet? Uh, I'm still thinking. Okay. Well, you had called back our a postcard, I think, the other day, and I was just calling back to see how I can help. Did you have a couple moments? Yes. Yeah, so uh, kind of catch me up to speed. What's going on with the house there? I have a couple people uh, looking at it and and giving me a price. Oh, okay. And then, so if you were able to get a price that made sense for you, how soon would you be ready to get the process started? Today? No. <laughs> ah, not that quick, huh? No. So is this house, uh, is it a tenant in here or is vacant? What's going on there? It's vacant. Oh, okay. How long has it been empty for? Since I bought it a couple years ago. Oh. What was your original plan? You were going to fix it up or something? or? I was going to live, live upstairs and my son will live on the middle floor, but... He, he didn't want to go to that school district. Oh, yeah, that makes a difference, doesn't so, it? Yeah, yeah, so, so I decided to sell it, and uh, agent lost my key. Really? And wanted me to give, yes, and wanted me to give him another one, and that really, <laughs> and so I didn't want to uh, call any agents anymore. Yeah, that was irresponsible. They should have they should have gotten that taken care of. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, when I found this, when I have cards, you know, putting maybe I I could, you know, cards that I dare not call because I'm afraid it might be the same the same person who asked me for uh, for another key. You know, the the person who lost it. So it's been bothering all this time. And meanwhile, I, well, I passed inspection on electricity and plumbing, but there are small things that, that I didn't pass inspection. And then on January 24th, I discovered, well, the water company should have turned the water off on January 10th, but they did not. Uh-oh. Did the pipes burst or something yes. there? Um, uh-oh. It's not bursted. It's um, it's a disconnection. Oh, so just disconnected. Yeah, and that was so close to well, it's a, maybe a foot or two from from a wall. Uh, so we poke a hole on the wall, and consequently, the finished portion of the basement was also bursted. Mm. And well, with that damage, I I was. I, actually, I was so close to uh, calling the uh, inspector to pass my inspection, and I really think that I would pass, but then since this <laughs> yeah. is the flood, and so I didn't do anything. For two months, I 
ask the water company to take care of the damage, but they just ignore me. Wow. So I decided, okay, let's just sell it as is. So just so selling it as is would be a... So what I'm hearing is just selling it as is is what you would like to do. You don't want to fix anything. Is that correct? Right. Perfect, perfect. That's exactly how we buy them. We just try to make it easy for you, um, you know, to make Have this... I'm looking at some pictures online. Does it look the way it does here online? Oh, oh, I have never seen any pictures online, so I don't know. Oh, okay. It doesn't look like it's in bad but shape. I, but I, I put in a lot of money, you know, just signing a loan would cost me 25000 Wow. Uh -huh. So you already did the sighting? Yes. $25,000. Yikes. Yes. That's expensive. Yes. And it's been like a couple years ago. Mm hmm And so now you're saying the only thing that it needs is some minor repair on the inside on a wall? Yeah, there's a hole on the wall in the basement and the floor needs to be replaced because it's totally wet. So the floor, and that's in the basement or on the main level? The basement. All of this is in the basement, okay. Yeah. Yep. Uh, actually, on January, let's see, January 17th, I got an offer for 149 and it was going to be closed in a month, but then, <laughs> then the flood came on a week later. Oh, no. That's why I say yeah. when you get a property sold, skid marks to the closing table. Get it closed up quickly. <laughs> well, then um, then the buyer called me like a month or two later and asked if, if the damage is fixed. I said, no, the water company. Then I called a couple other, you know, uh, complaint to, uh, well, some authoritative person now but no one seemed to pay me any attention well then i lost the buyer well, that's crazy yeah well i'm here to help you out in any way i can are you here in st louis or you just have an out-of-town number oh, i am i am in st louis oh okay because yeah never changed my yeah yeah, because we help a lot of people who are selling properties who are out of town. So we help coordinate everything on this end for them so they don't have to do a lot of work. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. If you like, I can show you a house tomorrow. Okay. Uh, so you're thinking tomorrow's a good time for you. Uh, what did you What did you have in mind as far as a price? How much did you want to sell it for? At 149 I'm losing, but I'm willing. <laughs> So then, uh, 149 is losing to you, you say? 149, yes. Because I paid like 10,000 something for something. Another 10,000 for, oh, electricity must be. Or plumbing. Is there, plumbing. Is there still a loan on this house? Well, it's not a official loan. It's just from through my sister. Oh, okay. Private money. So a family member. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. See, yeah. I wish I had a rich sister. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, I mean, uh, and so what is the price you would like to get, like, in a perfect scenario for you? You don't want to uh, look at it and then give me a price. Actually, it's, pretty, it's in very good condition. Because I put this up for myself to live. I actually put in all my decorations. I had all my pictures hung up and everything, but I think a year or two later, I call a woman agent, you know, just to make sure uh, it's not the same man who lost my key. And she came in and she was about to list it, uh, but I didn't agree to it. <laughs> oh, wow. I mean, I just saw her because I lost, I, I lost, um, yeah. Uh, not agent. I mean, uh, trust or something. <laughs> yeah. Any event that somebody loses a key like that, they should have gotten a locksmith over there and and made that correct for you. You know. Yeah. They and, yeah. And didn't even didn't even 
even have told me. <laughs> yeah. Because I completely even lost uh, my uh, confidence with yeah. all of them. Actually. That was irresponsible of them for sure. Yeah, yeah. So, so what is the? I'm trying to figure. How much did you want to sell the house for? Like in your in your mind. You, you don't want to look at it first. Well, I'm just asking what you want. I am going to look at it. I'm just asking what would you like to get for it? Maybe a hundred thirty, maybe. One thirty is the number you're trying to get. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's not too bad. That sounds reasonable. Um, and then. What is the timeline you're on? When would you like to be done with this property? Closed out, paid out, finished? Tomorrow. <laughs> oh, wow. You want out of there that quick? Well, I need to come today then if you want to be out tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Let's see what you think. Yeah, I mean... I don't see any reason why, you know, something in that price range would not work. Um, I'm just trying to figure uh, if we're solving all the problems. Is that is there anything else I would need to know about the house or this situation? I don't. There's nothing wrong. Well, the last time I uh, um, well, there was like debris outside of the window still that I need to clean up. That was the, the problem that was holding me up from uh, occupancy permit. You know, just small things like that. Yeah. And we deal with all of that, so that's not a problem. Is this considered Breckenridge, or what, what, what township is this? Overland. Oh, this is Overland, so just over the border there. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, our office is literally right up the street from you. We're at uh, Woodson and St. Charles Rock Road, so that's where our office is at. Oh, yeah, that's very close. Mm -hmm. I could almost walk yeah. over there. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I walk around there. That's why I bought. I I want. You know, I wanted to live in that area. Right. So I didn't know the inspector was just so uh, <laughs> so stringent about his rules. Yeah, they can get really picky. You know, especially if you get yeah. into other areas yeah. of St. Louis. Every little township is different. You know. Well. <laughs> okay. So, Miss Miss Wu, if we were able to get up to that price that you want of one thirty, would you be ready to get the process started when I come out to the house? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, so let's see here. I'm gonna what I'm gonna do now is gonna run some uh, comps and comparables, you know, to see what the houses in the area go for. This is a four bedroom, three bath. Is that correct? Yes. A four three. Um. And then, would you consider taking a monthly payment until you were paid off in full for this house? For how long? You know, that's a good question. Uh, we just try to structure something to get this property off your hands, get you some money in your hands, and solve the problem of you dealing with this house. So basically, uh, we just try to structure something creative uh, to solve your problem and get this property off your hands quickly. I mean, you think you would be open to that conversation? advised not to well see the 149 uh, person who wanted to buy it it was like self-finance no owner finance like what you are asking to do and i was advised not to do that why did you who advised you not to do that um my uh, boss <laughs> uh-oh not the boss <laughs> what, what what was it that made it uh seem like it wouldn't work well because well, what is your down payment? Well, I mean, every case is different. You know, with this house needing repairs, I would have to assess what that would cost would be so we can make sure that we account for that. Um, but we've bought yeah, houses that, for... So we've bought houses yeah, for... The re, I'll go yeah, ahead. The repair would be a lot less than the lawyer's fee. If the water company is to tell me, oh, I don't know, somebody, you know, that is associate with the water company uh, and asked me to sue them. Oh, wow. <laughs> and my, yeah, and my boss said, well, you know, the lawyer's fee will be, will cost a lot more than your, you know, replacing your floor. Yeah. But, you know, buying some uh, floor, floor and put them down is not that much. 
Yeah, so we would come in and buy the house as is, do all the repairs, all the updates, get the property to pass inspection. So we have to account for that. So depending on what that expense would be, that would determine what we could do as far as a down payment. Now we have bought houses for nothing down and we did some with something down. Every case is different. What do you think will work best for you? Well, if you, I think we should carry on this conversation after you look at the place because it's really not that much of a damage at all. Okay. That's fine. Am I able to see it this? dollars will take care of it. You say how much? Maybe just a couple hundred. Oh, okay. Well, that's not anything and major. I even offer the water company that I will put down the, the floor myself if they buy me the material. But still, I was ignored. Yeah. Uh. Well, I mean, is it possible for me to see it this afternoon? What time? Uh, let's see, it's about 12 now, let's say, uh, around 5 o'clock. Why are you such a hurry? Because I, I work tomorrow and I'll be there tomorrow at work. Oh, okay, I can wait, but I know you said you had other people trying to buy it. I don't want you to just go sell it to yeah, them. Yeah. I want to buy it. You know, when you tell me somebody else is on her, I know sometimes you just go with the first person who shows up. And I'm like, wait a minute, we got to beat these people out and, uh, you know, actually well, buy the house. Yeah. Well, you got Chris now, so you're in good hands. I'm going to solve this problem for you. I promise you that. How about that? Okay. You're in good hands. Do you see my number on your caller ID? Familiar, you've been calling me a few times. Yeah, you had called back one of our postcards. What I'm going to do is I'm going to text you from my okay. direct number. You say, oh, your postcard is that a company name? St. Louis Cash Buyers buying your house for cash. And it's a postcard? That's what you said on your uh, voicemail you left. You said you, you called back our postcard and. Uh, you were looking to sell it, and so. <laughs> nevertheless, you're in good hands now. You're 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 in with the best. I'm going to solve this problem for you either way. Okay, I'm going to help you out. All right, we'll see you uh, one thirty tomorrow. You say what time tomorrow? One thirty. One thirty is good for you tomorrow. Okay, and then I'll call you and let you know when I'm on the way to make sure you're there and everything. Um, All right. Other than that, uh, I'm going to text you after this phone call from my direct number so you have direct contact to me and you have all my contact information. Um, like I said, my name is Chris with St. Louis Cash Buyers. Did you have any other questions for me for now before I let you go? No. All right. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Yeah, bye-bye. Bye-bye. With a smile. Let me go ahead and text her from my direct number. What do you think about that call? She don't know how to work that phone. You don't need to work that phone with me, baby. You locked in with me. You mine's not good. Get in here. Get in here, Miss Miss Wuna, whatever your name was. She had a Chinese name. But yeah, what do you think about her? What's her motivation level on a scale of one to ten? One, no motivation. Two, highly motivated. I'm going to text her from my direct number. And so now she has me. What do you think about that lady? I like this house, by the way. Y'all want to see what the house looks like? I like the house. It's a big house. These are the kind of houses you want to get. If you're going to get a house, get a big house. Four bedroom, three bath, baby. Let's see. That's what it looked like. Oh, let me see here. That's the front of it. Don't look like it need much. What's wrong with this house? What's wrong with this house? I have a tenant buyer in here tomorrow. The day I put it under contract. They like these kind of houses too. Four bedroom. The people from South America that's coming in. They like this kind of stuff. If it look anything like this. I mean, what's wrong with it? What's wrong with it? I mean, it ain't up to date perfect, but somebody can move right in this puppy. Shoot. 
Oh, let me go back. I missed the sink for y'all. The zinc. The zinc in this mug. Look at that. Is that marble? Is that marble on there? Damn. She said a couple hundred dollars. Well, I'm finna buy this house. And she only want $130. I'm gonna offer her $120 cash and $149 on terms. I already know my offer. I'm gonna offer exactly what the other people offered her because guess what the ARV is? The after repair value. Well, I'll tell you this. The Zestimate say 202 2029, so basically 203. Come on. Come on with it. Let me see. So somebody texted me. Friday afternoon or oh, I'm sorry. Thursday. Yeah, that'll work. That works. All right, so what you think? What you think? I think that we cooking now, y'all. We got Miss Wu. She's been hard to catch. Y'all been trying to call her for some days. So, you know, when we get these people on the phone, um, you know, everything works. Let me go back. I see I saw some questions in here or a comment. At least she gave you a number. So when that seller, you notice, I had to ask her not once, not twice, but three times how much she wanted for the house. How much you want for the house? Oh, you need to come see it. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. How much you want for the house? Oh, I think you should see it first. No, how much do you want for the house? Not what I'm going to give you. What do you want? So I made her give me a number. I don't take the first no, and I don't f hide out from objections. If they try to dodge my questions, I'm coming back again. I might let you talk a little bit, make you feel better, and come right on back and ask my questions. What up, Maisha Monet, California love in the building? West Side, good to see you. So, you know, when people tell you that, you know, it ain't going to work, you don't know. Ask the question. Make them give you an answer. Make them answer you your questions. Because if you don't, what they going to do? Do just like her. Oh, they ain't going to give me the price. No, you're going to give me a number, lady. I know she said 149 And then I got to find out that 149 was a seller finance deal. So I'm going to have to go in and find out. How can we make that 149 seller finance deal on a $200,000 house? She talking about how much down? Five grand, she, 10 grand. I don't know. I ain't giving her too much. I give her something to make her feel better. But if she want to take a low ball cash off, I'm going to give her 120 and keep it moving. Let me make sure this ARV is that. What up, Andre? Good to see you, my man. You just missed two nice calls. We cooking today, man. We cooking. Seller calls. We're making live seller calls. Get somebody on this phone and let them sell me their home. So for those that don't know, my name is Chris Monroe. It's the student master teacher, Mr. I Stay Woke. I'm out of St. Louis, Missouri, and I buy real estate here in St. Louis, but I can do a wholesale deal or any deal anywhere in America. All we need is a seller with a problem. Bring me a seller with a problem. That's what I tell people. And I don't want just one problem. I don't even want two problems. I want three to five pain points. Three to five pain points. That's the place to be. What up, Lady D? Las Vegas in the building. We out here gambling now. We throwing dice. Good to see you as well. Hope you're doing well. Um, so a four-bedroom. They got it on here. It's a four-bedroom, two-and-a-half bath. Let me see here. Why was the Zestimate 200? Oh, there's a house here that's sold. For a four bedroom, three bath sold for one ninety. Another one sold for one seventy four. That's all we need. We need a seller who got a problem with some real estate. That's it. Which way we gonna go? I don't know. I don't try to predict that. And I see a lot of people come in talking to a seller. Oh no, I'm gonna short term rental this property, and they thinking about all the stuff they gonna do. Or oh, I'm gonna wholesale this property. They thinking about all this stuff they gonna do, and oh, I'm gonna list this property. They thinking about all this listing they gonna do. Don't put your mind into the seller. You put the seller's mind on the platter and you serve them up. What do you want, Mr. Seller? What do you want, Mrs. Seller? What makes this a perfect scenario for you? Now, when they tell me what they want, that's when we serve them exactly what they asked for. How easy is it? How easy is that? It's not even closing at this point. It's not even closing. It's giving a person exactly what they asked for. Hey, and then she told me the number of 130 on the purchase price. So if we were able to do 130,000 on a purchase price, you'd be ready to get the paperwork started? Yes. Wow. 
She said yes too quick. So I know we got a little room on that. I'm going to offer 120. And if the ARV really is 200, let me see. Is that a good deal? Let's put it in our calculator. Let's pull up the calculator. Calculate, calculate. If we took the ARV, we think is around 200 times 0.7. That's 140. And I'm going to offer her 120. A buyer can buy this for 140. And it need light repairs, she say. We'll see if it really need light repairs. You know it always need more. But that's the game we play. Give them what they want that you can get to the bag. That's right. That's what we're doing, Lady D. That's what we're doing out here. We helping people with real estate problems. Don't overthink it. Don't overcomplicate it. And if they dodge your questions, ask them again. That's the moral of the story. Ask them again. Any other questions about that particular opportunity there before we move on and see who else we got on the chopping block? If there is someone on the chopping block, I don't know. Let me look in this other system here. I think I got somebody that texted back and said something smart. They might have been just fibbing me, though. You never know. That is it. That's it. That's what we're doing. Let me check my text messages. Uh, somebody said wrong number. I'm going to look. Uh, let's see here. Interested in selling it. I don't own it. No, 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 nope. Okay. I thought we had somebody on the hook here to text back. Okay, we do have somebody. Did I speak to this dude? Oh, I don't think I spoke to this guy. This house is up in Spanish Lake. Let me see. I did get a new lead this morning, too, that I got a call back, I believe. Real early this morning. Let me make sure that was something. I think we got at least two more calls to make. At least two more. Uh, what was that under? Let me make sure this isn't the same person that came in this morning. Nope, that's on Arrow Point. That's somebody named Joshua. We're going to call him back in a minute. And then we got this guy here, Jason. So this is, I don't even know if he's interested in selling because our message said, hey, I hope all is well. I'm reaching out about the address on LaVita Avenue or LaVita Avenue. Would you be open to talk about some options? He says, I am. Uh, and then he that's what he said. I am. Let me know. So I'm just going to call him back. He's open to talking about some options. Does that mean you want to sell it? Because, you know, you have to change your verbiage up on your text messages. If you're always talking about selling and buying and keywords, you can get your stuff spammed and you won't get any messages through. So we just asked, would you be open to talk about some options? That just made it so it's not um, spammy. Let's call Jason. That's loud. Hello? Hey, Jason, this is Chris. You had a text back about the house on La Vida. Say you were interested in selling. Oh, I guess he isn't. He hung up. Let's call him back. Hmm, I guess that answered that question. Was he interested in selling or he just said, I am? Let me call him back. I think we got disconnected. Double tap. He hung up quick, too. He ain't even think about it. Oh, uh, what happened? I can't call him back. Did he block me? What the hell just happened here? Call him back. Call him back. Hello? Hey, Jason. I think we got disconnected. I was calling about the property on La Vida. Hello? Yeah, can you hear me? Hello? Person called me like three times. Oh, well, maybe they can't hear me on that call. Let me call him from the other phone. My bad. Maybe he didn't hang up. Maybe it's something going on with that phone. Let me call him from the real phone. That's why you got to have more than one phone number. I got 50 phone numbers. Good morning from Houston. Woo -woo. So that's not a dialer. That was actually um, Batch. Batch Leads phone. That's what I was calling back on right there. So now I'm going to call him from Call Rail. Hello? Hey, Jason, this is Chris. How are you today? I'm doing good, man. How about you? Good, good. I was uh, calling you about your house on La Vida Avenue. Uh, were you still looking to sell it? Uh, yes, sir. Perfect, perfect. Did you have a couple moments? 
Yeah, sure did. You did good. So uh, I was just trying to get caught up to speed here. What's going on with it? No, not anything. I've, I've got uh, uh, two houses right now, and I just uh, want to get down to one. <laughs> I, I know that's right. Just paying on a bill and paying taxes and everything else for no reason, huh? Well, no, nah, you know, it, it was it was it was a good thing while while it was uh, while it was there. I mean, we were living out of out of the two houses, um, but now it's just starting to. I'm just ready to. It's just ready to consolidate now. Makes perfect sense. So um, this one is empty now. I guess is what I'm hearing. No, it's it, we're we're still in it. It's just uh, we're looking to get everything out of it and um, you know, just move on. Makes sense. Makes sense. So, what kind of timeline are you on? Uh, when would you like to be closed and done with this house on La Vida? By the end of May. May. Oh yeah, that's a that's that's quite a bit away. Well, I'm, dang, it's almost April. That surprises me. I'm like, wow, this year is going by too fast, right? <laughs> way too fast so the end of may is your timeline uh tell me a little bit about the condition does it need any repairs or anything that you're aware of um the only thing i know that it needs to, that needs repair is there's a there's a couple holes in the uh the wall from us moving in um that i haven't got around the patching yet and there was some some painting that needs to be done but and uh the the carpet in the front kind of needs it was it was new carpet, but there was no, uh, I guess people that remodeled it before we moved in, um, they didn't put any stain blocker on it. So I think I could just clean that carpet and it'd be good. Um, but it's, it's like new carpet, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, but there, you know, there's a railing up the stairs that's, that's good. It's a, it's a good railing. It's just, that was one of the things I was wanting to get done with before I actually went to sell. Oh, um, okay. But I don't know how, how crucial those things are. It's got an almost brand new furnace. It's got a new roof on it. And uh, when we moved in in uh, late, I think we, we moved in in late 21, early 22, I got new gutters put on it with uh, gutter guards and, and stuff like that. So all of that stuff in, in, good, in good shape. And uh, I mean, generally, the house is in, in good shape. It's obviously very, very livable, you know. <laughs> Perfect, perfect. A little few minor things that you have in a house that you've lived in for two to three years that, you know, you, shit that you need to get around to one of those weekends or vacations. Yep, exactly. So are you planning on doing any of that stuff or you just want to sell it as is and be done with that house? Um, I'm planning on doing some of that stuff. Uh, uh, and, and some of that stuff isn't, isn't all that important. But, I mean, selling it as is, if I can get the right price for it, I'd be, I'd be totally completely fine with that. I know that's right. So in your mind, what is the right price? I was looking at like 175. It's on a double lot. Um, it has the garage. Uh, it has a, a, you know, I mean, it's the double lot. One side of it's all yards. So if somebody wanted to put a pool there or something, it would be pretty easy to do. Um, you know, so in the, in the driveway, uh, it can be a little bit better, but it's, 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 it's on good driveway for what it is. Oh, okay. And you say it's on a double lot, so you're saying that another house can be built there? Yeah, absolutely, 100%. Mm, so you got some land. Mm -hmm. Is uh, kind of, I mean, I wouldn't say it's a, a plethora of land, but <laughs> if you look at the look look at how it's laid out, but yeah, it's, it's basically one section that it's a, a, another house could be built on. Okay, makes sense. And so. Uh, are you planning on like listing it on the market with an agent or something, or you just want to sell it to like an investor and be done with it? I'd like to just be done with it, but I mean, we're in, we're in the process of, of talking about that, maybe getting an agent, maybe, maybe doing all of that stuff. Um, but I mean, just, you know, conversation form right now, really. Yeah. Cause if we were to buy it, we would just buy it cash as is, and you don't have to worry about any real estate commissions fees or anything like that so it's kind of a cleaner way most of the time in uh, most situations as long as the numbers make sense you know right 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 and so we got your um, 175 how did you come up with that amount I'm looking at what what the houses are selling for in the area I'm looking for what I paid for it I'm looking at how much the houses have came up in that area 
I'm also looking at the the new things that are happening there. They're building the the zoo's wildlife care park. Yeah. Um, they're also building a new marina down there. Um, so the property values are going are going up right now. Um, so and I thought I bought it. I bought it for a steal. Um, so I was I was thinking 175 would be would be a good number. Makes perfect sense. Um, so I was thinking, I mean, would you be, would you consider taking a monthly payment until you were paid off in full? No, I'd have to have it. I'd have to have it all right there. Okay. Cause yeah, I know that was a way we can get to that 175 pretty easily, but as a cash mm -hmm. deal, it'll probably be a little bit less than that. I mean, is that something we should even explore or? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's the 175 obviously is adjustable. We were probably thinking about, uh, listing it for a little bit more than that and aiming at that, but, um, Obviously, if a you know there's no BS involved with it or anything else, a little bit less wouldn't be that bad. And by a little bit less, I don't mean mad. You know, forty thousand dollars less. I mean um, like twenty thousand dollars less at the at the most. Okay, so like one fifty-five or so is what you're thinking as a cash yeah. deal. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then. Um, let me see here. And so you said you'll be out by the end of May. Needs very light repairs, if any. Very, very light. Um, it probably would be best option just to throw it on the market, I would think, if you know you want to get you know the most for it, if that's really your goal. Right. Is that is that mm -hmm. more important to you, getting the most out of it, or just selling it and being done quickly? Is that more important to you? It's kind of it's a one half a dozen of the other. <laughs> you know it. Yeah, because it gets tricky. Uh, this is a three-bedroom, one-and-a-half bath, is that right? Yeah, three-bedroom, one-and-a-half bath. It has a laundry room. The uh, kitchen is in the, you know, it's a split level, so the, the kitchen's in the lower level. Um, the kitchen is a, an updated kitchen. Um, all the floors are updated. Um, they were put in right before. I mean, the place was fully remodeled before we moved into it. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, it's all, all nice. Okay, perfect. It's like it has a pretty big driveway. You have a pretty big driveway there. You can put about, what, 15 cars there or something? Oh, yeah, I can put a bunch of cars in there. A tractor trailer could fit right there almost, couldn't it? <laughs> well, I was actually looking at dropping a couple of storage containers in that lot over there and building a big garage with them. Mm. Oh, on that open lot? Yeah, that oh, would make sense. Enough space to pull it off. Perfect, perfect. So what I'm going to do here, Jason, is I'm going to run some comps of comparables, see what we can offer as far as a cash offer. Should I send you my uh, creative offer as well with that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, just to, uh, if you could email it to me, that'd be perfect. That would be great. So after this call, I'm going to text you. It'll have my company information and my name, contact information. If you just reply back with your email, I'll uh, get that over to you this afternoon. Other than that, uh, right. did you have any questions for me for now before I let you go? No, nope, that's it, man. That sounds good. All right. Like I said, I'm Chris with St. Louis Cash Bars. Uh, I'll be back with you soon. All right. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah, we're going to have to dig a little more. So he said no to terms. The only way he's getting 175 is terms. And I'll give him 175 on it because it's a big-ass house. And he got a lot of upside, and he knows too much. See, some of these sellers you talk to, what's up, uh, single out loud, singled out loud. I uh, good, good to see you. Um, some of these sellers know too much, and he's one of those sellers. He knows too much. Oh, I know that they're going to put the zoo expansion. This is literally probably a mile away from the brand new St. Louis Zoo expansion up in North County in Spanish Lake. Um, let me text this guy real quick, Jason. Learn more about us here. Please send the best email address for you. Boom. So there he go. Sent him that. So we got to get him an offer. Uh, we got to send Miss Luna or whatever her name, Lena, an offer. And so, yeah, that seller knows too much. What do you think about him? What is his motivational level? Is he on a one through 10? Is he not motivated? I was asking those probing questions to expose his motivation, probing questions to expose his situation. Probing questions to oh he wrote his email back that quick damn he's on the he's on the ball he's on it let me go add him in here real quick if I can to this uh, CRM since that came off of a text campaign it didn't really come from a I just happened to look and seeing that somebody wrote me back I'm like oh he wrote back he's interested let's get him an offer 
everybody gets an offer. Remember that. Even though you're like, oh, they ain't going to take it, everybody gets an offer because you don't know what they're going to really do. I've given people offers, forgotten about them, and they come back and say, yeah, they want to they move forward. Happens all the time. So that was another Jason. I talked to two Jasons today. Spooky. Spooky. Oh, I just got on here, but I know you stirred it up. Oh, well, shoot. He may be a number one. Yeah, you never know. I mean, I like the house. I just don't like that price. One, 175 He's He's top, top of the market. He's not playing when it comes to that. Let me fix this so that this goes in proper. There we go. Boom. Yeah, he's literally right there at, at Spanish Lake, pretty much. At the Spanish Lake up in St. Louis, North St. Louis County. Uh, he's trying to sell. Let me put the notes in here. He's owner-occupant. Uh... Lead source. Where did this come from? Batch text campaign. See, we hit these people so much. We text, we call, we voicemail. I think the ARV is around, uh, I'm, I'm going to check. I think it's close to 200, close to what he's asking. It might be right at what he's asking, to be honest, but I'm going to check in a second. I know he's real, because I got houses over there. I own several houses in that area. So that 200 is probably real close to top of the market. Yep, you got to shoot your shot. That's the name of the game. Shoot that shot, baby. You never know. Um, doing due diligence. He didn't say if he owed anything. I didn't ask him how much he owed on it, but I'll just treat him as a seller finance deal. Um, anything else? Okay, let me put some notes in here. Save. And everything that I wrote down, we'll put it in the CRM for if I got to come back later. New gutters. New, I'm not going to type all that. We got to do this in a shortcut. New gutters. Roof. Furnace. I was going to write new all them times. Furnace. And I spelled furnace wrong. Fern S. Fern ass. Fern ass, that boy. Woo. All right, so then needs. Railing, which is easy. That ain't nothing. Paint. Possible carpet. In front room. And holes in wall. Light rehab. If any, that ain't even really a rehab. And seller wants. 175k will consider 155k cash. You like how I got them down on that price? Did you like how oh, you missed it though? You missed it. But a Lions World saw you like how I got them down on that price? I wiggled them down. He wiggled himself down to 155. Uh occupied by owner. Yep. So we gotta send him an offer. Did I put his email in there? Yep. And that's going to be Mr. Jason. Damn. Needs offer. So I talked to two Jasons back to back. That's spooky. I got a Jason up here. They got a tenant. I got a Jason here where he is the tenant. <laughs> we got two Jasons with a mask on. So give this video a thumbs up. Give it a like. Give it a share. If you care, I got at least one more call I'm going to make. Maybe two. But I know I got at least one more. This is a Joshua. He's in the same area as he in. And he wants the same price. $175. Damn. Joshua is in Spanish Lake on Arrow Point. Owner occupied. He wants to sell within the next one or two months. Guess why he's selling? What is the reason Joshua is selling? Do you need funding for your real estate deals? Future Cash Flow Funding has exactly what you need. Whether you're looking to fix and flip new construction loans, or if you even have rental properties, you can get the financing you need today. Futurecashflowfunding.com. Check it out. Futurecashflowfunding.com. Find more leads than you can even process. That's multiple listing service. That's the MLS for your real estate agents. Absentee owner information. Find the cash buyers and flippers in any market nationwide. Pull a pre-foreclosure list. And don't forget, you got to find those comps. Get nationwide access with multiple filters. 
powered by PropStream at WokeSource.com. Get your seven day free trial today. WokeSource.com. That's WokeSource.com. Can you guess it? I'm going to give you a second, see if you can guess it. Why is he selling his house? It's a, uh, well, I don't know how many beds and baths. He's been there for at least five years. He wants to sell in the next one or two months. He's owner-occupied. Why does he want to sell? What up, CEO 100K? 100K club in a building. Uh, let's see here. He's on arrow point. So we're making some follow-up calls with some sellers. Follow-up and initial calls. That was an initial call, by the way. The first call was an initial call. That call. So I did four, three calls already. First call was uh, a follow-up. The second call was an initial call. This last call was an initial call. And now this call is an initial call. So these ain't even follow-up calls. Follow-up with people who raise their hand and say, hey, I want to sell my house. So he said he want to sell his house due to the D word, divorce. He getting rid of his wife. His wife getting rid of him, baby. They done filed that paperwork. <laughs> they getting the divorce. So let's see what this house is real quick before I call him. Out on Arrow Point, out in Spanish Lake, right there. Not too far from the last house we just spoke to. Damn, that's a big house. Damn. I'm going to let y'all see what this house looks like. That's a big house. Look at that, that two-car garage. Shoot. Come on with it. That roof look good. And it's the uh, Google Maps picture. So, you know, it, well, it's taken in 2022. So, it shouldn't look too much worse than it. So, we know that he has probably little to no equity. So, we'll see what's going on with him. That's this one here on Arrow Point. Arrow Point. Is this Spanish Lake? No, this ain't even Spanish. Uh, I guess it is. It's not near that house. It's over closer to the floors inside. So it's in a better area. It's in a better area than his house is in. Hmm. In the same zip code, 63138. Come on. So this is Mr. Uh, Joshua. Let me see what this house is worth. Uh, the Zestimate says two twenty nine. So he's realistic with his price. If he want one seventy five, and the Zestimate say two twenty nine, this house got a lot of stuff in it. God, doggity doodle. Four bed, three bath. I'll let y'all see it real quick before I call him. Hope he answers the phone after all of that. I usually don't like to show the house until after I spoke to the person. They got a lot of stuff in there. Look at that nice wine and stuff. They out here doing it good. What kind of countertop is that? That ain't granite. They did it. And they got dogs. Oh, man. It's going to be a stank house. They got dogs. And it's a big dog because they had to lift up the thing to where you can eat. So this house smell like dog. At least it's got uh, no carpet. It look like some boo-boo on the floor right there. Is that boo-boo? Is that boo-boo right there? What is that? Boo-boo. Dog boo-boo. He couldn't make it outside. Oof. Some big bedrooms. It's a nice house. So let's call him up. See what he's talking about. It's time for some follow-up calls, y'all. It's time for some follow-up calls, y'all. Follow-up. Follow-up. Pick up the phone. Let's go. Hello. All right. This is, uh, where is, where is his phone number at? There it is. It's called Joshua. He's getting rid of his wife. He put this in at 4 a.m. this morning, by the way, y'all. This lead came in at 4, at 3.59 a.m. this morning. So he couldn't even sleep. He was tossing and turning. Really? That's why I like showing the house before we talk to the person. Because they end up doing this old silly mess. Answer that phone, boy. Answer that phone, boy. Okay, 
let's call them back. That was uh that number. Oh, and I was calling from the wrong phone. No, no, I wasn't. I was calling from the right phone. Uh, pretty house number. Boom. straight to that voicemail thing. I'm sorry, but the person you called has a voice. He did not answer the phone. I... He did not answer that phone, man. He ain't answer that phone, man. He ain't answer that phone. He ain't answer that phone, man. Answer that phone. I'm going to give him a few more seconds and call him again. He was up at 4 in the morning. He might be asleep. He might be taking a dirt nap. So for those that are interested in learning more about how to do these real estate deals, how do we generate leads? As you see, I keep leads coming all the time. You got to generate leads. You got to do the, the calls, do the work, do the calls to learn how to be better on the phones, understanding the four pillars, timeline, condition, motivation, and price. You want to get that out of people at a bare minimum. And then submit them an offer, whether that's a cash lowball offer or a creative offer, underwriting the deal. You want to learn more about how to do that, go to futurecashflowclub.com. Sign up for the elite package that'll get you all the paperwork you need to do these deals. That'll get you weekly trainings so you can actually understand how to do these deals. Futurecashflowclub.com. Thanks for calling. Yep. Okay, but I could have texted that on the way. I'm gonna put a new faucet in. <laughs> You're gonna have a new faucet, Shay, baby, when you get back. <sniffs> All right, let's see here. Pin comment futurecashflowclub.com. Go sign up for the elite package that'll get you the paperwork to make the paperwork, the weekly trainings. Uh, you can do ride alongs if you're here in town. If you come to St. Louis, you can go actually see these houses on the should I buy or say bye bye. You get all that, you know, it's like, it's a, it's a steal really, to be honest with you. The price is actually going to be going up because it's too cheap for what I'm giving. I'm giving you everything that you could go pay $60,000 from all these other gurus to learn the same stuff. But you get to learn it from me, the student master teacher, Mr. I Stay Woke, futurecashflowclub.com. So check it out. That's the Patreon. Go be a patron and get the elite package that'll get you the best value. It's only $75 a month. I can't even believe I said that. That's the steal. That's a steal. And you get direct access when you're working your deals. Come on, man. What more you want? You're getting too much, to be honest. I think it's too much. The price need to go up. The price is going up, for real. I just started it at that, so the early adopters who come in early can actually uh, get that going. I'm going to call this Joshua dude one more again, and then that's going to be the end of him. Uh, what do we do here? Paste and call. So he's not answering. Let me see who else we got here. Who is Bruce? Oh, I talked to Bruce. Let me follow up with Bruce. I sent, I've been to his house already. I've been to his house, gave him an offer, gave him a contract. I'm just waiting on him to sign a contract. Because I'm probably going to end up renegotiating with him too, but we'll see how that goes. This is that $600,000 house out in uh, in Chesterfield. You'll be grandfathered in. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You might want to get it before the price goes up. Yes, ma'am. Or not even just the price. It might get sold out because we only got so many slots. Hello. Hey, Bruce, this is Chris with St. Louis Cash Buyers. How are you today? Fine. Good. I was just following up with you to see if you got a chance to get 
uh, look over that DocuSign document I sent you uh, for buying your house. Uh, no, that should be, uh, I shouldn't have looked at this by this weekend. Okay. Other than that, you doing okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was just checking on you. Make sure you're doing okay. And uh, if you need anything, let me know, okay? All right. Thank you very much. All right. Have a good day. You too. Bye-bye. Mr. Bruce. So I don't know if you, did I do a video on this? I don't even think I did a video. Oh, I'll put the pictures up in my story on that house. This is a huge house out in Chesterfield. ARV 850,000. Between 850 and 870 is what that house go for. I'm putting it under contract at 605. 605. And I'm probably going to get it a little bit less once I get them under contract. But I'm not going to tell them that now. I was going to get them under contract, market the deal, and then uh, see what the buyers say, and then we'll get them down if we need to. Somebody might buy it at the six fifty. I'm gonna send it out at it because I was gonna send it out at six fifty, and try to make a good uh, forty five thousand dollar wholesale deal. Don't tell nobody. So I was just following up with him. Let's see who else is on the chopping block. I think there's some people here that I didn't speak to yet. Cassandra, I spoke to her. Willie, I spoke to him. I'm doing a short sale with him. Willie, Olga, I need to call Olga. Did she sell this house on Cracky yet? Let's call Olga. So I talked to this lady about a month ago and then she came back around. Let me see something here first. Cause I think I told her around 25,000 was the price, but let me double check something here. This house is in really bad condition. This house has been vacant for a very long time and it's in very bad condition, but Um, when the first time I talked to her, she was really unrealistic. She was talking about she wanted like 50,000 or something, 55, some stupid number. Now she's back down to 34, which I still want her down around 20. And really, that's even cutting it tight, to be honest. This house needs a full renovation. I'm just going to follow up with her anyway. Olga, 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 Olga. And I'm probably going to end it because they'll be here to do the renovations on this house. We renovating this house too. So give this video a thumbs up. Give it a like. Give it a share if you care. Hello. Hey, Olga. This is Chris with St. Louis Cash Bars. How are you today? From where? Where? Uh, I spoke to you about your house on Cracky Road. Did you get it sold yet? Oh, yeah. Oh, you did get it sold? No, no, I don't. Uh, I just mind about selling. So you are still selling it? Yes, I would like to sell it. Okay, yeah, well, we would like to buy it. Um, I know it needs quite a bit of work, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, I mean, if we were able to come up to a price that makes sense for you, would you be ready to get the process started today? Uh, first of all, I would like that you come to me to estimate how much you want to give me, how, how much I can sell with you. And then we can sign contract if, uh, if, if uh, we will be agreed about. Makes perfect sense. Uh, what did you want to get for it? How much? Uh, I, I spent already, this is a new roof. So I would like 45000 You put a and, new roof uh, on it? Yes, it's already a new roof. Just one week ago that it's done. Uh, that I, uh, but this house needs to work. You know, this is, uh, this is house nobody lives in very long time in this house. So that's why I would like that you to come to first see all of these outside and inside. Oh, okay. How, how much did it cost you to get that roof put on there? How much what? How much did how it much? cost to put the new roof on? Uh, it was about 9000 more than 9000 Ooh, Yeah, it's expensive. I thought it was about eight or 9000 mm -hmm. Yeah. So when could I take a look at it? Would you be available tomorrow afternoon? 
you can come anytime and the house is open and uh, so uh, you can call me when you will be here and um, tomorrow uh, I'm not sure that I, I can be there because I work so you can come anytime just give me a call that you are here and uh, I can come in two minutes I will be here so we're talking about uh, Price and etc. So. Okay, because yeah, I say on here that you said you wanted thirty four thousand for it. So I guess you were accounting for that roof. Is that what you got that price from? Um, thirty four thousand for the thirty four thousand. Uh, you had submitted a form to say you were looking to sell it for thirty four thousand. Is did that uh, did that yeah. change? It was before uh, roofing. Oh, uh, before now, the roof, yeah. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. So yeah, I'll definitely come take a look at it tomorrow afternoon and I'll let you know when I'm on the way, okay? Okay, thank you. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hello, that's right. Get that roof. The roof is on fire. Dang, the trash people late. They just coming to get the trash at lunchtime. Speaking of lunch, it's time for some lunch. So any other questions or anything or comments before I roll? We did a lot of calls today. This this replay is going up into the Future Cash Flow Club. So all these seller calls and stuff, I put them in there so you know you can check them out and get the replays for the ones you missed, different little tactics, um, things like that, so that you can see you know how to do this thing. If you don't catch it live, who is Kimberly? Did I speak to this lady? This is another good house that I never even spoke to. This is out in Webster Grove. She probably sold this house. This came in on March 4th, three weeks ago. That's crazy. And I can't, can't get the lady to answer the phone. But I'm going to call her right now, see if she sold it yet. This will be our last call, I hope. Answer that phone, Kim. She'll never answer her phone. I'm gonna have to call her at night. She'll probably be at work. But I'm like, I know you see the phone call coming in. When you call a person back, they've been calling you for weeks. I stopped calling her. I just happen to see it in the system. Let's try to call her again. This is out in Webster Groves, a, a bad house, a nice house. We're finna call it a day, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for jumping in. Hopefully you have a good rest of your day. Who have you talked to today? That's the question. Have you talked to anybody who has a problem with real estate? If you haven't, that's why you ain't doing no deals. It's really that simple. Are you generating leads? If you're not, that's why you ain't doing no deals. You got to have the conversations with people who own real estate who have problems. And you come in with a solution. Or I help you come in with a solution. And we partner on the deal. You never know. So hopefully you have a good rest of the day. Do what you do, be who you be, and I'll see you before you see me. So I want to get into real estate, but don't know where to start. Well, what I would say is to join the Future Cash Flow Club. It's a community of investors where we talk about wholesaling. We talk about creative deal structuring, buying houses subject to all of the creative stuff that everybody's talking about. You don't need a real estate license or any of that. Wow. Where do I sign up? Well, I would say go to futurecashflowclub.com. That's futurecashflowclub.com. You can even get a free trial. Try it out today.